Hello friends and welcome to Roar Church, Texarkana. If you want more information about anything that we do, go to jojodawson.net. You can find our YouTube videos, our blogs, where to sow, how to partner with us, any of that information. We hope that you enjoy this message. Lord, I want to thank you for all that you're doing. And Lord, I say that today is a day like none other. That you are going to just change hearts, change lives. Lord, let this word just go deep into people's DNAs today and let them think differently. Let them act differently when they leave. Lord, I just give you all the glory for all you're doing and all that you're going to do in our region. Amen. All right, I just want to jump into this super excited about what the Lord is going to do the next two weeks. In my, my natural mind, what I was going to do is I wanted to do a series on family um, marriage and then parenting and finances and different things and and, and the Lord just spoke this, this, this word to me uh, about building blocks. He wanted to talk about building blocks. And so um, we're going to build blocks. And then all of a sudden, I, uh, the Lord kind of put some things in my heart to share. And then late last night, he started dropping a download on me. And then this morning, he gave me a word that just is going to just transition us into the, the month of May. But before I get into that, the, the Lord was speaking to me this week when, when I was mowing I'm telling you, y'all, when I push mow, that's when I hear the Lord. I mean, I, I just, I don't know what it is, but I, I can hear the Lord push mow. And I'm not starting a mowing business, but I mean, I can hear the Lord quick too. So I just, my, my yard's little. But I was just mowing and the Lord was saying that it's time that people start here, that I start helping people move forward and help people advance so so when I talk to you and and I, I meet you the, the the nicest of nicest may not be there but the helping you push you advance you get you going is going to be there and so building blocks and, and a building block is something that you build upon and you keep building and you keep building and you keep building so this morning when I woke up I mean you ever had one of those you're sleeping and then you're like boom and right when your eyes open up you hear a word from the Lord well, I heard three of them today. And I, as soon as I woke up, I heard the, the word move, establish, advance. And I said, wow, move, establish, and advance. And then I said, well, Lord, what does that mean? And, and, and he said, you know, it, it's, a, it's a building. It is a building anointing that is about to rest upon this house. And everybody watching on, on, on Facebook Live and watching the YouTube when it comes up, move, establish, advance. And there is a building anointing coming up on us at a greater dimension. And then I said, Lord, when is this going to happen? And the Lord said, well, how many days is it to May? And I said, oh, just a few days. And, and, and what the Lord has been speaking to me over the past three to four weeks is that what is going to happen is when that the Lord is getting people ready. And when May gets here, something is going to happen. I haven't traveled in the month of April. I have been seeking the Lord in the month of April. I've been going on different fasts in the month of April. But I am getting ready for May. And, and I just believe that this is a season that a lot of people corporately are going to individually build on what's inside of you. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I could call y'all out. But I mean, I mean, it's like some people, when, you, when I look at you, I'm like, oh my goodness, it's all over you. It is all over. You are about to start building. And, and, and so, of course, if you talk about building, you got to talk about my brother Nehemiah. I mean, there's Nehemiah. If I had an Old Testament brother, it would be Nehemiah. You know, I would say Ezra, but that'd be my son, you know. So Nehemiah just, he just built. So let's just get into Nehemiah 1. And Nehemiah 1, it says, In the month of Kishvel, in the twelfth year, while I was still in the citadel of Suz, it said, Hananiah, one of my brothers, came to me from Judah. Now, when I was getting this word, I told my wife, and she said, oh, my goodness, that she just wrote a book and had some of this in there. So she started telling me about this book, and I said, isn't it funny how my wife can be reading the exact same thing that I'm speaking, and the wisdom that she got is going to help just elevate this message to another dimension in you, okay? So check this. He talked to Hananiah, one of his brothers from Judah. Okay, you understand that he was originally from Judah. That is very key. Okay, so he was from Judah, one of his brothers. And they were talking about the Jewish remnant and how things were going back in Jerusalem. 
And then they said to me, those who survived in exile are back in the province. Uh Uh-oh, the Lord's putting the band back together. He's putting them together. So the the people are starting to automatically flow together, get together, and build something. Have you ever noticed that when God gets ready to build, he starts bringing people together? I don't know if it's just you or if it's me, but you start talking to people, and all of a sudden the same visions start popping up. People are getting excited about the same thing because God is putting something together. So Nehemiah was like, hang on. You mean everybody that had to left, now they're coming back. Oh, God's up to something. And so he got excited. And then so he, he started fasting. He started praying. And, and so the Lord started speaking to him. And the Lord put a burden in his heart to go back and rebuild the walls, rebuild what the Lord once said should be there. Amen. Chapter 2. And it was in the, in the next month that King Artaxerxes, what a name. If, if, if you all are going to have, have a baby boy, Call him Artaxerxes. I mean, is that not fun to say? Artaxerxes, come here, dude. Sounds like something from Gladiator or Braveheart. You know, Artaxerxes. Um, And so he was talking to him. And so the king said, Nehemiah, what's wrong? You are full of the Lord. You're happy. You're excited. What is wrong? He said, because in my homeland in Judah... Get it? His homeland in Judah, in Jerusalem, the walls have fallen down. Now God is calling me back to rebuild, and my heart is hurting for what the Lord has put in my heart. I have a burden. So the the king spoke to him and said, now go. I want you to go and do all that is in their heart. See, sometimes you just got to have the word from the king saying go. And what I feel that so many of you have had the word in your heart to go from not a king, from the king. I'm telling you, there's something on this today. There is a building anointing coming in the month of May, and you better start building. I don't care. Well, nobody here is um, under 12 because they ain't kids, church, y'all. But, I mean, I don't care how old you are, how many times you failed, what everybody said, you better get ready to build. Build. This is your time. I hope some of y'all get scared, some of y'all get nervous, hands all sweating today, because the Lord, y'all look at me like, quit looking at me, I'm going to preach like this the rest of the day. I'm telling you, no hands. You know, I'm just going, this is your time, this is your time. And so he said, I want you to go. And then the king said to me, you know, what is it that you want? Did you know we can be in a time with God that God can say, what's in your heart? That's how this whole journey got started almost six years ago. The Lord spoke to my wife and I said, what's in your heart? So I'm asking you today, what do you want to do? What's in your heart? What has God put in your heart? That's probably why your your face is frowning because you're not doing it. Because Nehemiah walked in and he was just like, he was down. And the king said, why are you so upset? Why does your countenance fail? You can't be my servant and have a a countenance like that. He said, "Well, well, the Lord wants me over here. God wants me doing something different. And all of a sudden, the, the favor of the king said, go. The favor of the king is upon you today. Go. What are you waiting for? This is your time. This is your time to go. So one thing that the Lord has been speaking to me about is to tell people, every one of you, that this is your season to build. Quit planning. Quit plotting. Quit talking about it. And do it. When it's all said and done, there'll be more said than done but not here. When it's all said and done, there'll be more done than said. Quit talking and do it. Start building. Get your hands on it. I know your vision. I can quote it backwards in the Hebrew and the Greek because you've told it to me so many times. Now it's time that you put some action to it. I need to see a game plan. I need to see a strategy. I need to see you moving forward on it. And see, the, the thing that the Lord has been showing me is the only reason Nehemiah went back was not for Nehemiah to fulfill his call was because of all of the Jewish people. See, your call really has nothing to do with you. It has to do with everybody that's around you. It has to do with your kid. Okay, we're sitting here. It's Ezra's first time not being kid. I mean, in in the nursery. So he was here to put the mic in his hand. Dude wouldn't give it back. 
And, and, and I'm like, I want you to see what this feels like because this is something that if you choose to do, that you could step into. You know, there, there's people, you know, you know like, like when they're probably singing and doing worship practice, they probably have their, their kids, they talk to them about worship. Well, whenever you're working, yesterday, Ezra and I was working around the house. I'm not going to tell you what we was fixing. We was fixing some stuff. Okay, it was the toilet. We was fixing some stuff. And we, we was building some I said, come here, son. I, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't use this screwdriver. I can't get it myself. So he got in there. Boy, he was just, you know, just, just doing some stuff. And we're fixing stuff around the house, changing air vents a few days ago and he was handing them to me you, you know I, I'm building something in him we are building for somebody else you've got to get this message today and I, I'm going to go and tell you this message isn't for anybody I'm going to be honest I feel this message is only for about three or four people in here today that's it but my goodness the three or four people that get it it's going to change your life okay so then it goes back in, in Nehemiah. It says, Then I prayed un, un, unto the God of heaven, and I answered the king. If it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, send me back to Judah. Some of you are going to have to get along with the king and say, Look, you know, you have found favor in his sight, but said, Send me. Do what you need to do to get me prepared. And so the king said, Sure. I'm going to send finances. I'm going to put you on a good horse. I'm going to take care of you. Because when God sins, he sends. Amen. He just doesn't throw you away. He sends you. But now this is, this is the part that you got to understand about Nehemiah. I got a lot to cover. You're going to have to fill in the blanks in your spirit. I can't just go through the whole entire book of the Bible right now. But here's what happened. When Nehemiah came back, Nehemiah 2, when Nehemiah came back, he ran into to Sanballat, the, the Horonite. To buy the Amorite and then Gisham, the Arab. And I thought, go, oh, and God showed me, he said, Why do you think I told where they were all from? You know why God said where they were all from? Because none of them were natives. That was not their land. And my wife was telling me about this in this book that Apostle Dutch Sheets wrote, and he elaborated on it. I'm gonna read that book. But, and I was, I was thinking about that. Isn't it funny that the people, y'all ready? The people that were governing the land. We're not even from the land. The man that's supposed to govern the land is way over here. The people that are in charge of your calling right now, doing what you're called to do, are governing it, and they're not even supposed to. Somebody's working at your job. Somebody launched a business that you're about to take over. Somebody's in that management position that you're about to take over. When God steps you up, you're going to be able to have influence amongst a lot of people. There are a lot of things that are your spiritual inheritance from God that other people are in charge of. And all of a sudden, you've got to go because they, they may be in charge in the natural, but you're in charge of the spirit. There are so many times, you know, there is cancer taking charge over people. They don't have any authority taking charge over. There's people that are walking in infirmities. There's people that are walking in poverty. That's not what their lot in life is. Somebody's got to come up and take authority over that. So Nehemiah walked in and he was just hanging out, you know, at, at, at the local, you know, whatever, coffee shop, sandwich shop, whatever he's hanging out. And all of a sudden, you know, Sanballat and Tobiah were like, hey, man, what are you doing? I'm going to go rebuild that wall. And they're like, oh, you are? Oh, well, we're government officials. He's like, I know. But I come from a kingdom. I'm being sent by the king. Oh, you're coming against our king? He said, no, no, no. Y'all been coming against my king. And, and he said, so I'm going to come in and build something. And they said, you have no right to build here. He said, well, I got all of the right in, in heaven and earth. Are you, are you catching this? You know, when people establish ministries to the homeless, to, to people in poverty, to, to single moms, to, to help different people, they've got authority because the enemies came in in some dimension. We've we got a stronger dimension I hope you're, you're, you're understanding that, that, that the world is the leaders in technology, but we are about to step up and become the leaders in technology in the church. The, the church copies the world a lot of times on what they do, but the world is going to copy what the church does because there's about to be a power. Are you all with me today? Okay. Man, I've got so many notes. I'm trying to get through the first page at least. So, and then this is what, what the Lord was talking to the king. And the king was like, man, go ahead and go. So he went, Sanballat and Tobias started coming against him, but it's okay. Now, this is verse 20 in Nehemiah 2. I answered them by saying, the God of heaven, excuse me, let's go back, 19. We're talking about Sanballat, Tobias, and, and Gisham, and they were talking against 
This is deep, y'all. Hang on, give me a second. Whew. I'm getting a little overwhelmed. <laughs> this is so good. They were not even from the region, but thought they had ownership. When he walked in, they said, what is this you're wanting to do? They asked. Are you rebelling against our king? They automatically started bringing accusations just because he stepped on the scene. When you step onto your job, when you come into a family reunion, when you do anything and you're about to do something from, um, for the king and you step in, there's an anointing. There is an authority upon your life and people will come against you. Have you ever, have you ever had a time at a family reunion or, or whatever it may be? Or like I remember one time I was in the gym and there's this one guy. He was a little bit overweight. Well, when he stepped in the gym, people kind of made fun of him. And my first thought was, what gives them the right to make fun of this guy? So I said, hey, dude, don't pay attention to them. And I started talking to him because he said, I felt like I was supposed to come and work on my health. But right when he stepped in the door, people made fun of him. Whenever, whenever you step into a new job and when you step in, people will feel that anointing, that authority on you. They'll come against you. Why are you coming against me? Can we not have any harmony, unity in here? No, no, because they, they felt that anointing upon your life. Okay, so Nehemiah 2.20. I asked them and said, the God of heaven will give me success and we, his servants, will start rebuilding. Okay, this is the best part. He said, but for you... You have no share in Jerusalem or any claim in its historical right to it. Y'all getting with me? with me on this? I know this isn't a shouting message, but I'm shouting in my spirit. He said, God of heaven will give me success and his servants will start rebuilding. They declared what they're going to do. And he said, but you guys that think you control everything with your mouth, you actually have no control. You have no right to be here. Oh, no, and, and then so like Tobiah was actually a government official of the region. So what did God say? Man voted him in on that. And he was illegally there. So there's three things. I got this from the Dakes Anointed. I call it the Dakes Anointed Reference Bible. But it's so good. It says three things. They had, this is talking about Sanballat and Tobiah. They had no portion in Jerusalem. Not one single part of that whole entire city was theirs. But one guy was even a government official. Are y'all tracking with me on this? The second thing, they had no rights in Jerusalem because God claimed that city. And the third one is they had no memorial in Jerusalem. It didn't mean anything to them. It was just a city. It was just a town. They had nothing in them. There was no tie to that city. I'm telling you, what, you've got a tie to what God has called you to. You have a right in this region. You have a portion in this region. The enemy has came into this region and tried to destroy this region. It does not have any right. It has no portion, but you do. do are, are you hearing me? You have a right. You know, Nehemiah got a burden and a dream and a vision and a burden to go rebuild the wall. And that's what he was called to do. But they came against him from the moment that he stepped on the scene. You know, listen, this is what you got to understand. God, he calls you to something and names you as that. As you step into something and you start doing it, then that's what people call you. Let me explain it. If a young kid is three years old and says, man, I'm going to be a professional football player. Well, everybody laughs at him. Oh, you can't. You're this. You're that. You can't. Whatever. But, but he says, you know, that's what I feel I'm supposed to do. But then when he gets older and he makes it to the NFL, what do they say? Oh, you are an NFL football player. I, I, I've been telling you that for 20 years. You don't know somebody that says that they're called to, to do something in ministry. People say it. You know, okay, we got to get real spiritual. Y'all ever seen Cars 3? Y'all seen Cars 3? Well, I remember they were talking about Doc Hudson. He was the, if y'all have seen it, he was the fabulous Hudson Hornet, okay? He was the fabulous Hudson Hornet. And the other race cars said when Doc Hudson came on the scene, his first race, he was the fabulous Hudson Hornet. He didn't make himself. He knew he was. There is... There is greatness. There is power inside of every single person here. They may not see it. You know, you only need one person to believe in you. You. And when, when you believe in yourself, Mrs. V, I don't care what anybody says, you're going to do it. 
Nehemiah didn't have to have the approval or the applause of men. He just did it. You know who your worst critic is usually? You? Not me. I like me. You know, and what happens is I, I did not like me for years. But when I realized God had something inside of me and I realized that I truly had a, a father in heaven that loved me, it changed everything. I'm telling you, you've got something powerful inside of you. But the reason I feel God had me to speak this today is there's two or three of you, maybe four or five at the most, no more than six. But what it is, is that you have heard me preach on dreams, destiny, purpose. You've done all this. And what have you done? Nothing. Come on. This is the time. And this is the season. Nehemiah knew that there was a remnant of Jews and he said, Lord, I know that there is a remnant over there. And if I go, and they said, Nehemiah walked in, and they said he walked over and started talking to the priest. And the priests were like, yeah, let's do this for the Lord. There was already a group of people. All he had to do is step on the scene and say, this is what I'm going to do. And people jumped in. Now, what you got to understand is it never happens until you say yes. When God calls you to do something and you say, yes, God, I'll do it. And you step up boldly and say, yes, then your team comes around you. Then finances come around you. Then wisdom, knowledge and understanding will come around you. But if you're trying to get everybody to jump on board, it will never happen until you step out and do it. Is this tracking with anybody today? Is this making sense to anybody today? Now, now I'm going to give you seven things that will oppose you when you get ready to build something for God. When God calls you to build something, there are seven things that were going to oppose you when you try to build something from God, okay? And this is coming all straight out of Brother Nehemiah's book. Nehemiah 4 and 1. Number one is anger. But it so happened that Sanballat heard that they were about to do the rebuilding of the wall, and he was furious and started mocking the Jews. Okay, what happened is when he heard he was going to build it, listen, he didn't see anything. He just heard he was going to do something. He became furious and angry because something rose up inside of him. Okay, Job, explain why he was angry. Thank you for asking. This is why he was angry, okay? Because when the natural-minded people are building something and somebody full of the Spirit walks in, they're like, hang on. All the kids are going to the bathroom. They're waving. Y'all don't see them, but I do. Okay. So when the, somebody full of the Spirit walks in, everybody in the natural says, oh, what's that? What's going on? There's something shaking. There's something going on. Their city board meetings are shaking. There's a, the religious culture is shaking because there's something going on in the Spirit. The Spirit always trumps the natural. But whenever nothing is happening in the Spirit, the natural just takes care of itself. Man's good plans, their best plans, will never take over God's plan and God's best plan. Amen. So they got number one was angry. Number two, they went ahead and started to ridicule them. Verse two, Nehemiah 4, 2. And he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, what are these feeble Jews doing? Feeble people back then actually means that they could not reproduce. Okay. And it said, what are they going to fortify themselves? What will they offer sacrifice? They're making fun of what they would call like their religion. And it said, will they complete this in a day? And they started just constantly making fun of them. What are you going to build with those rubblish walls? You can't build with that. They started throwing doubt. They started ridiculing them. Man, if people are, are throwing ridicule at you, just use them as building blocks. It's kind of fun. So then in verse 3, now Tobiah, he said, i got to chime in on this because they're not listening to Sam Ballad. Maybe since i got a government office, I'll jump in. And he said, whatever they build, even if a fox goes up on it, it will break down. And he said, y'all can't build anything. So they started ridiculing them. It didn't matter. Because when you get a word from God, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what anybody says. That was number three. Two, excuse me. And then to go, not to, this is not a number, but they started mocking them in, in verse, you know, three. And then in verse four, that they just kept, you know, coming at them. But you know what Nehemiah said? Nothing. He just started building. See, so many times you have to defend your, let me tell you something. You do not have to defend yourself against anybody. You just say, okay. And you just smile, even if you don't want to. And you just keep going. 
The Bible says if you argue with a fool, you're known as a fool. I just don't like to argue. Waste too much time. Number three, conspiracy and war. Nehemiah 4, 7 and 8. And now it happened when Sanballat, Tobiah, and the Arabs. Wait a minute. How come they didn't name that one guy? They just said the Arabs. Isn't that funny how no, he is no longer the head guy? He's just kind of pushed away. Oh, God will wipe your enemies away from you one at a time, baby. One at, I hope you all got that. And it said, now it happened when Sanballat, Tobiah, and the Arabs started coming against them. It said they gasped and they were getting to get close and they became very angry. See, when someone's building something for the kingdom, people always get mad. And they all came against them and conspired together to come against them. Listen, they're over here building and all these people are getting together from all ethnic groups and, and all different denominations and they all got together and they were saying, how can we stop them? How can we stop them? Now they were over here planning and plotting and Nehemiah was going to next level, baby. Next, He was building that wall. Next level. We go in dimensions. We're going up and they were building while everybody was talking. Let them talk and you you just do what you do. What Jeff always say? Let them talk and we're going to walk. And, and just constantly building. People will come against you. They'll talk about your marriage. They'll talk about your kids. They'll talk about your occupation. They'll just talk. And you just keep on moving. You just keep on moving. You just keep on moving. You know, they're throwing dirt at you. That's great. Get that dirt. Plant another seed. Get that dirt. Plant another seed. Get that dirt. Plant another You just keep growing. Some of you got to learn how to endure opposition. You might actually start to like it. You know, number four, continual threats. In Nehemiah 4, 10 to 23, I'm not going to read it all, but in 10 it said, Then Judah said, The strength of the laborers is failing, and there is so much rubbish that we are not able to build the wall. Okay, they were building and they were getting tired of doing the work and hearing this. You've got to learn how to block the voices out. Continual threats started coming at them, and it started trying to get to them. See, here's what you have to understand. When something natural comes after something in the spirit, the only way it can uh, attack the spirit is to get the person to step out of the spirit and think in the natural. You got me? And all of a sudden you step back and say, there's no way that I'm going to think about this. Now, let me tell you how you know if you're walking more in the flesh or the spirit. When, when people come against you on things, does it bother you or does it not? You just let it go. And you got to grow in the Lord on these things. You got to grow. Number five, Craftiness, man, they were, that, was, that was number five. They were just crafty in their words. They were educated men. They were coming at them, okay? And, and in 6.1 it says, And now about that time, Sanballat, Tobiah, Gisham, he's back in. And it said all the rest of their enemies, all the rest of their enemies, how many enemies they got? And they just started just acquiring enemies. The more you do for God, the more enemies you're going to get. If you don't know how successful you are in life, how many enemies you got? You know, they just start coming in, and it's okay. It's okay because you're making a difference. You know, I, I don't care it, 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 what you're standing for in life. There's somebody's going to oppose you. I don't care what you're standing for. Somebody's going to come against you. Somebody's going to always come in. You do what God said. Even if it doesn't make any sense to anybody else, you keep doing what the Lord has said. And, and then it goes on to say that how... And their enemies heard that they were rebuilding the wall and they kept coming against them. But they could see there was no breaks left in there and it was working. So Nehemiah 6 and 3. So I sent messengers to them saying, I am doing a good work. They kept saying, hey, Nehemiah, come down. Nehemiah, come down. Nehemiah, come down. You know, there's times when you're moving. And what I feel is coming in May to a lot of people is that your life's going to get at a very fast pace, and it's going to be a good pace. Things are going to start happening for you so fast. Listen, you, you have to understand this part right here, okay? Don't stop every time somebody calls. Don't stop every time somebody needs your attention, your time, because a lot of times they're not of the Lord. So, so ne Nehemiah was working, and Sam and Tobiah were sending a message. He's like, come on down, come on down, come on down. They called him. He didn't answer. They texted him. He didn't answer. They emailed him. They, they did smoke signals. They, did. they sent people. Nothing worked. He would not come down. So this is what Nehemiah said. I sent messages to him saying, I am doing a great work, so I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it just to come down there to you? When you're building something, building blocks, you don't have time sometimes to stop just because someone over here wants to talk to you. You got to understand that. When you're building 
You do what the Lord says. But they sent this message to me four times, and I answered them in the same manner. Y'all get that? They, 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 kept, they kept sending me messages. I answered the same way. They sent another message. I answered the same way. They sent me another message. Same. They sent another one. Same. I'm not coming down. And see, here's the thing. Everybody thinks you think like they think, but they don't. Well, why is he not responding? This is how I would respond. Well, I'm not you. You, you, you understand that? You got to understand that people think differently. That's what made them so mad is because he thought higher than everybody else. You getting it? And so when you think higher than everybody else, you will respond. Your actual, the way that you respond to people will frustrate them because they're not thinking. And to do what you need to do in this upcoming season, you're going to think higher than you ever have before. You're not going to be able to get frustrated. You're not going to, be able to get mad. You might not be able to sleep as much, but you're about to get it done. Now, now let, me, let me give you this. Um, I got this this morning um, as I was just driving up here. But in life, people always have different issues and problems. You have to understand by the Spirit of the Lord how to think your way through everything. Okay? I've had people say, oh, man, um, I was abused as a kid. Okay, so you were abused as a kid, and, and that's, that's horrible. What are you called to do? This. Okay, how are you going to get over that and get to this? Hey, I got a physical infirmity. Okay, but you're called to this with this physical infirmity. How are you going to get from physical infirmity to get to do this? How are you going to, well, I, I can't. You, you can. You've got to learn how to process it and think through it. Nehemiah's building, his workers are complaining. Sounds like Brother Moses. And, and people are coming against him. Okay, that's great. You take a break. You carry a sword. You intercede. You cook. And all of a sudden, we're going to work through this thing. Hey, you got to work through some things with the Lord. Have you ever had a moment where you just said, hey, God, look, let's kind of pull off to the side. And, um, and you get over here, and, and you and the Lord is in a huddle, and you spend some time on a fast and a prayer and say, God, I, I can't do this, but you've got, to, you've got to work me through in here. Because when you get this right here made up, you can do anything. You can do everything. I'm telling you, when you get a made-up mind, listen, you can't talk me out of my dream. And, and I hope I can't talk you out of, out of your dream. You know, my wife and I, we are about to step into a lot of new things. In fact, we're just going to throw caution to the wind. We're just going to go for it. We all in, all that type of good stuff. And we're going for it. And nobody can talk us out of what we're called to do because he's told us. And we know, you know, we know his voice. And, and we're, we're excited about it. But what, but what happens is every time you say yes to God, opposition comes. But you've got to think your way all the way through it, no matter what happens. No matter what happens. Like I said, I'm just preaching to a handful of people today. Some of y'all might be bored. Some of y'all might not be paying attention. But the three or four that you're going to hear is going to change everything. I, I don't care. And let me tell you something. When God tells you to do something, it's not easy. He doesn't say get from point A to point B. Oh, look at the nice bridge. Oh, no. It's, it's like a river with Shamu and crocodiles. And you got, to, you got to find a way to get over. But you're going to get over. You know, it's just you have to understand this. But, but it is so worth it. You know what's fun? You know, there's been times in my life when God told me to do something. And, and, and I preached this a few weeks ago. But when I got there, it looked different than I thought it would. But it wasn't a, a getting to the promise or the end destination I liked. It was the process that I went through. Because here's what happens. When God gives you a, a dream and when he gives it to me, you, I can't do it right then. It would destroy me. I remember one time I was ministering at a conference, and, and I had the, the early Saturday morning. I didn't have one of the night sessions, um, and I had the Saturday morning. Well, the guy preaching Friday night called me up on the stage, and, and they had the, the worship team, and they had all these ministers, and I got up there, and I got to do like an exhortation, and it was big. And I, I said, God, I'm not ready. For, if, if you put me here full time, I will destroy myself. And I said, God, you get to pull me back. I am not ready for this. Sometimes it's not getting somewhere too quick. It is understanding when you're not ready to get somewhere that will help you. There's times when you'll step into something and you'll be like, whew, thanks for letting me see where I'm going to go. But it's not quite time. It's like when you turn 16 and you go look for your cars. And the first time you're 16, you got to pay for it yourself. You just go to the Escalade. This is how people are. And you go, oh, 83,000. Let me go over here for a minute. Use 1993. You know, and you know, the people, and, but because you, you think, but I might get there one day. You know, you have to understand that, that God is, is shaping you. So Nehemiah saw the end, but he knew there was a process. Number six, Nehemiah 6, 5 through 9, number six was accusations. 
Nobody likes accusations coming against them. Then Sanballat sent his messenger to me as before the fifth time with an open letter in his hand. And it was like, here it is. This is the letter. Answer him. No, he's not going to do it. And the report amongst the nations, and Gisham says this. He says, oh, you're planning a big rebellion against the king. That's what you're doing. We're going to tell everybody, you're planning a whole rebellion. You're building this wall. Now the whole kingdom's coming after you. Well, how would you like to be in charge of all the men and all the families that were right there? And that now they're telling you everybody's coming. It was accusations. Now, let me give you this. What was the first physical attack they've done on them so far? Nothing. It was all in their mind. It was all in their mind. Most of the attacks that come at you will be in your mind. And so they kept building. They kept building. They kept building. And, and they kept saying, oh, so there's no real king in Judah. Nobody has spiritual authority in the region. So you're building this so you can become king. You're rebelling against us. We're going to kill you. We're going to destroy you. And Nehemiah says, put another block right there. We're building something. And he just keeps building. And, then, and this is what's good right here. And then I, I said to him saying, no such thing that you say is ever even being done, you have invented these thoughts in your own heart and mind. And so people were trying to create this in their heart and their mind because people, I hate to say it, but people will destroy their self coming against you so hard. There is a time that some people will hate your success to the point it will destroy other people because hatred. That's why you can never have hatred or envy of anybody else. The Bible says where envy, y'all ready? The Bible says where envy is, every evil thing lies behind it. So when somebody has envy towards anybody, that's why I remember one time I was in a discipleship breakfast and there was six young guys, this guy, and this, this older gentleman said, we're gonna have a little fun exercise. <laughs> and I uh, had a little fun exercise. And, and he's like, if you could be anybody in the world, who would you wanna be? And the first guy said this person, the second guy said this person, the next guy said this person. When it got to the, the leader, he said his thing, and everybody had went. When he got to me, he said, if you could be anybody in the world, who would you want to be? And I said, Jojo Dawson. And he said, no, name somebody else. I said, no, I'd want to be me. He said, why would you, why would you want to be you? I said, I don't, I don't just, well, I, I want to be me. I said, because I don't want to be somebody else. I don't know who they are. I don't know their struggle. I don't know what they go through. I would want to be me. That's who God made me. And he got mad, y'all. And, and I said, because <laughs> I said, I don't want to be anybody else because I don't ever want to have envy towards anybody. I don't want somebody else's house. I don't want their bills. I don't want their warfare. I don't want their family. I want what God has for me. A lot of people, I mean, and you got to understand that you can't want to be or please anybody because Nehemiah would have came off that wall if he tried to please everybody who had natural authority over him, but he was going after the things of the Spirit. Amen? So the, the reason I, I told you that is even in fun and games, letting your mind run idle can destroy people by thinking, I wish I was this or this or compare. There, like as Autumn always says, there's no competition and there's no comparison in the kingdom. There's none. So, so it goes on, they kept attacking them, and number seven is treachery, that's it, they're all out battle, and, and then this is what they said, these worldly folks tried to get just churchy on them, they said, oh, Nehemiah, oh, bless the Lord, they said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple and let us close the doors of the temple, no, you ain't closed no door, and it says, for they are coming to kill you. They were going to kill this dude in the church. Sad message. But he said, if you will come into the church, let us reason together. Because they thought maybe if he's doing it for God, he would quit doing that from God and come into the church. But it's still just the building. And so he said, I'm not even going to do it. Now, are you all ready for, for the good stuff? Oh, man, this is so good. And so here goes Nehemiah 6 and 19. Tobiah sent many letters to put me in fear. Very next verse, Nehemiah 7 and 1. Now it came to pass when the wall was built. Y'all got that? One verse says, Tobiah sent many letters to put me in fear. Next verse, wall's done. The whole time Nehemiah was doing what God called him to do, he was under constant, 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 Attack. 
if you are going to build something in this day and age, it's going to be hard. It's going to be fun. And it's going to be rewarding. And there's really no shortcuts. You know, the way that my wife and I do things is we work diligently and we work to try to build anything. I'm talking marriage, family, relationship with God, everything that we do, finances, business, everything we do, we work hard to build it, but we also count on the supernatural hand of God. We just don't rely on the supernatural hand of God. We're going to be found working. We're going to be found building blocks. We're going to be building things. Amen. But then all of a sudden, when you get somewhere, Nehemiah said, you know, it took a team to do what he was called to do. And then Everybody faded away, and he was able to establish something. It's all about establishing something. What, what, what are the three words God gave me? Move, establish, and advance. And this is what you, I felt the Lord show me on this. You were supposed to step up and move into what you were supposed to build right now. Like right now, right now. You're supposed to step into it. Then you are supposed to establish it. Then when you get it established, you know what you do? You advance with it. And then you move and you establish and you advance. Then you move and you establish and advance. Hey, I know you want to start that little business. It's going to be cute, but it's going to become a chain. Just get ready. It's going to chain. It's going to get bigger. And this is going to grow. You know, last August, we started doing Roar Weekends and different things. Then we started Roar Church, and it was fun, and we're doing this. And then now people are saying, hey, can you come do a Roar Weekend in my city? Yeah. Hey, can you come do a Roar Weekend in, in my city? Yeah, hey, can you do a rural weekend? It's just growing. And then, hey, can you go preach? No, I can't, but I'll send somebody else to come preach. Hey, can, can, can maybe somebody come help help this church? Sure, I'll send somebody from Roar. Yeah, I'll send somebody from Roar. I'll send somebody from Roar. Because when you build, you build for so many people. It's not just for yourself. Amen? Listen, and not everybody's going to believe in your dream. It's okay. Hey, let me tell you something. I believe in your dream. So if you ever say, nobody believes my dream, you lying because I believe in your dream. Even if it's crazy, even if it's wild. And if I kind of struggle with it, my wife, she'll believe in it. She'll believe in your dream. (laughs) We're going to believe in you, okay? And don't ever make someone else's dream your dream. Because it will destroy you. It will destroy you because the oil of the Lord won't be upon it, okay? Hey, and whenever there is a remnant, God will always raise people up around whatever you are called to. I don't care what kind of ministry you're going to do, whatever business you're going to do, God will bring people around you to do that. You know, and here's what you got to think where you're at right now. David was taught out in the middle of a wilderness. He was tending some sheep and God was like, my goodness, look at that boy. That dude right there can tend to some sheep. You know, sometimes, you know, my children act like sheep. I'm a, if he can handle them, he can show enough handle them. And so he put him from that, his dad's kingdom to God's kingdom and just moved him over. You were in training. Did you know that your job is training for you right now? You don't like your job. You have no idea what kind of college God's got you in right now. He, he, he's got you ha- hanging out with some different people. He's got you learning skills. He's got you learning things right now. And the sooner you realize it, the better. All right. Now I'm going to give you this right here, kind of changing subjects. But Jeremiah 5, 14. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of hosts, because you speak this word bold, I will make my words in your mouth fire and the people would and it will devour them. What you got to understand when God gives you a word to speak and you go speak, you got to understand all of heaven is coming behind you. I'm talking you've got the fire behind you. You got the wind of God. You've got the fire coming forth. And when you speak a word, it will grab a hold of somebody. When you speak that word, it is fire fire coming out of your mouth and it would devour them I had somebody recently they were like frustrated at me and I stepped up and I spoke a word the word they went smiled at me again because that word is powerful when it comes from the Lord you got to understand that the word is powerful when it comes from the Lord and and let me tell you what's happening in, in this day and age are you ready there's a lot of thank you Autumn there's a lot of false prophets out there there's a lot of people saying stuff that they don't know what to say so they just saying something They ain't got no word, so they just saying something. You know what? But there's about to arise a groups of people that have something to say. We, this group has something to say, and we're going to start saying it. And the Lord has told me when, when I was, once again, mowing, I was mowing this week. I was mowing, and the Lord was like, you have so many voices inside of, of, oh, died, hang on. 
You got so many voices inside of Roar Church. I want you to help get people's voices out. I want you to, to help get the, 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 what they have inside of them out. And, and so the Lord's been telling me to start to help people grow in what they're called to do. Uh, people say, how can I help you? I don't worry about you helping me. How can I help you do what God has called you to do? The three or four people, this message is for today. Get it and do something with it. Hebrews 1 and 7, it says, And the angels, he says, mm, he makes his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. You ever seen fire and darkness? It just burns. You know, and, there, and there's so much power in fire. If you are a true minister, you know what the Bible says who the ministers are? All of us. You walk in the fire of God. And now if you're walking up in your job and, and there's seven people you work with and eight of them ain't even saved, I mean, you, you got that power to, to speak life and it changes the atmosphere. It burns up. Why does it say wood? Wood is something that is dead. It's been cut off. People that are dead wood have been cut off from the vine. They've been cut off. Your words will captivate them and kill everything dead upon them and bring them back in. You ain't got to understand the power you got. Now, let me tell you what Jeremiah said. I do like him. 23, 29. It says, Is not my word like a fire, declares the Lord, like a hammer that breaks a rock into pieces? It's what fire is. Fire is the great purifier which destroys all of the fake and leaves only the genuine and the real metal. I'm telling you, this is what fire does. It is the great purifier. You carry so much of God in you, your tongue is a purifier to everybody that's around you. If you understood the power that you had inside of your tongue, you know what the word hammer means? It means strengthens our life and conscience and crushes all evil in people's hearts. When you speak the word, it's like the fire goes around them and the hammer poof, hits them. And all of a sudden it changes everything. You got to understand the power that you got. I, don't look at your struggle and think that's you. That's not you. You're powerful. You're mighty. It's coming. A firebrand is one that creates unrest or strife. And I believe that's what we're going to do this region. We're going to create unrest and strife. That we're going to come in a, good, in a good way. That people are going to say, these people are burning for the Lord. They see miracles. They see signs and wonders. People are moving, shaking, entrepreneuring. I'm not seeing that. We're going to call people in. I got so many people, it's funny, that watch this video every single week, but they won't come to church. I, I get more messages from people outside the church than inside the church that message. That they watch it on YouTube. They watch it on Facebook. They're constantly messaging. I've got people say, I watch you every Sunday at 1. I said, you could watch me at 11 if you wanted to. You know, you, you could come on in. They say, I can't come right now. I said, all right, we'll just keep watching. Every fire is different. Never look at anybody else and compare yourself, ever. Hebrews 12, 29, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which whew, we may serve the Lord acceptably in reverence to godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. So many times we jump out of the fire when it gets hot, but you got to stay on your wall. Nehemiah was building on the wall, and all of a sudden those seven things I talked about started coming against him. Threats and treachery and accusations he kept building. Come off that wall, meet, meet me in the church, I ain't got time. He just kept building and kept building. The harder it got, the more he kept working. The more that he kept working. The more that he kept working. So many, I feel the Lord had me share this today because people have stopped. People have quit moving forward. I'm talking about your dreams. I'm talking about your aspirations. I'm talking about the things that God has called you to. You know, as I'm up here talking to you, you can't do just like I did in life and be successful. You've got to do what God's called you to do. There's no blueprints, 100%. You can't copy what anybody else does. What can fire consume? All sickness, all doubt, all fear. This is your time. I'm telling you, I felt the Lord wanted me to, to share this. In my mind, I wanted to talk about something else today. But I felt the Lord say, I got a handful of people that this message is going to save them. They're going to do it. And, you know... Like I said, my wife and I, we, we live what I'm talking about. And, and there's no certainty on a lot of things. You just got to go for it. Some of you have never gone for it in life. You've never gone for it in life. Well, why not today? Why not now? And, you know, I, I like to look at, I'm just going to talk about the last four months. 
Um, well, in December, Jeff and Michelle changed their single status to married status, you know. We, you know, the Johnsons, you know, got them a house, and the Shermers got them a house, and the other Shermers moved to Dexter County. There's all this stuff, and people are moving, it's happening, and, and God's positioning, and, and it's, it's happening. I just see so much happening in so many people. And, and then, like, Katie's just wild in what she's doing, and she's just going for it. And, and I'm thinking that one day, it's your time. And guess when your time is? Right now. Because you can sit around and applaud everybody. But now is your time to step out. My kids love when you do kids' church. You know that? They love when you do kids' They say, oh, she's so good. And they said it's so good because Hermes and Christa are so good. And they're, they're different and they're the same, but it's just so good. And you know what? What are you going to do? Don't ever look back and, and just think, God, I wasted my life just doing what everybody wanted me to do. Man, this is your time. And this was so strong on me today that the, the number one thing holding you back is this right here. Man, everything that I'm doing, I never thought I could do. And I still don't think I can do it, but I just don't think about it. I just do it. What happened if you, if you just went after everything? I'm telling you, there's an anointing on this group in May. I was talking to my friend Isaac Petrie the other day, but Pastor Petrie, and we are talking about there's something about to happen in this city. Don't watch it. Be a part of it. Be a part of what God is doing. You know, I, there, there's different people here that just, just started coming here. There's a reason you're here. Move on what the Lord has said. And I just want to pray for a supernatural fire of the Lord that everything that needs to be consumed will be consumed. Like I said, when the fire comes forth, it burns up the wood. And, and, and wood is dead. You know, you, you cut it off. It's cut off from the vine, and it burns. That's why they burn wood. But, but you need that something just, just burnt today. It needs to be burnt like just done in your life. And, and here, here is the thing. If you want to do something with your life that, that you feel the Lord's called you to, some of you need to go back to college. Some of you need to apply for that promotion at work that you're scared to apply for. Go for it. What's the worst they can say? No. What's the best they could say? Yes. Do it in life. And don't ever, don't ever settle. You just keep moving forward. That's why the true church is called the Ecclesia, a group of people that are moving. And we're always moving, y'all. This is the season. This is the time for people to be moving. So I just, I felt the Lord say, this was for a handful of people today, this, this word. And I want to pray for whoever it is for. Because I, I tell you, I did ministry for 21 years, and I didn't really like it. But I've done my calling for about a year, year and a half, and I absolutely love it. Because I know who I am, and I know what I'm called to do. And from this moment on, you can position yourself to do what you're called to do. And I tell you, when it does, it's just like everything falls into place in your life. Yes, we have warfare. Yes, we have situations. Yes, we have th things come against us. But we're like Nehemiah. We're always going to build. We're always going to build. Do you know why there's a few people in here? I mean, I like everybody. But there's a few people I like talking to because they're always building something. Hey, what's new? I say, hey, what's new? You, you know, let's just, let's just talk. I notice how I address people. Hey, what's going on? Hey, what's the Lord saying? Hey, what's new? When I ask me, hey, what's new? I know they're always doing something. They're always moving. Hey, what's new? Hey, what are you working on? Hey, people call me all the time. Hey, man, what new project you got working on? Oh, you're working on something. The only reason I do anything is to give it away. Who am I going to give stuff to? Got any recipients in here? You know, and it's just, we just want to give stuff. You just grow. And when you get this mindset of just growing, man, you're going to become alive. You're going to become alive. You know, even my kids, I go in, and our girls, they share a room, and I go lay on one of the bed, and I talk to the other one, and I always say, hey, well, what's going on? What do you want to do? Hey, you know, I can see you doing, let's just talk about this. And we start talking and dreaming, and, and, and you know, people, they don't tell kids when they're young, you know, this what you say, when you get out of high school, we're off the mess, we're just talking, go get a job. Never said that to my kids, ever. You know what I've said? Hey, when you get out of high school, Daddy will help you create anything you want to do. What do you want to do? If you want to go to college and you want to go, you know, the kids, it changes. And what are you going to do? I'll help you. But I want you to do. I don't want you to be like me and be 40, 41 and think, oh, this is who I am. 
This is what I'm called to do. I want them to know when they're young. I want to help them. And and understand, when you build something in your life, it's for your kids, it's for your spiritual children, everybody around you. I've got some people in their 60s that call me their spiritual father. I'm like, dad, dad, dad doesn't work right. But in the spirit it does. I mean, they was out of high school before I came up on the scene, you know. I mean, it was, it was just different. But this is your time. And, and I, I hope that when you sleep tonight, that when you lay your head down, you hear my voice. This is the time. This is your time. People watching, this is your time. This is your time to make a decision. I remember in my life, every time I made a decision, it wasn't the, the, the heavens parted and, and 17 angels caved down and, and poured um, gold Holy Spirit or something all over me. It wasn't anything like that. It was when I said, okay, yes, I'll do it. I, I remember um, I heard Apostle Dutch she say this one time in Florida. He said whenever somebody comes up and gives them a prophetic word, he said the people who give him prophetic words are um, Prophets, um, Chuck Pearson, Cindy Jacobs. And they said, we got a word for you. He said, great. What kind of a warfare is coming now? What's coming with this word? Because when you get a word, you know there's the, the, God's going to bless, the enemy's going to come after. But like Nehemiah, he stood. I'm talking chapter after chapter after chapter. This is how you, you can look at every chapter one, he built. Chapter two, he stood. Chapter 3, he built, he stood. 4, he built, he stood. He built, he stood. He built, he stood. He never stopped. When you never stop building, you never stop growing. I'm talking about, do you know why my wife and I have coffee dates? Well, I'm gonna, I have like a water date now. I'm like, no, drinking coffee right now. But while well, we do coffee dates every day, because every day we build our marriage. Do you know why I try to do something with my kids? It might be something short, but I try to give each kid personal attention every single day because I'm growing them every single day. If I meet with you, hey, I'm going to tell you guys, I meet like at 545, 6 in the morning at Starbucks. I love y'all because I like sleep. But when I meet with somebody, it's building something. Every time you meet, every day of your life, you're building something. What are you building I hate when people get in retirement, they're like, I have nothing to do. Are you joking me? I need like 40 hours a day just because we're growing, we're building. And your walk with God is the most important thing that you grow. I believe right now that some people are going to pray. And your biggest obstacle, your mind block is about to be broken off of your life. Now, now let me give you this. When it's broken, you can go or you can search for that next excuse. You can search for the next excuse. There's no excuses. You know, I mean, every time I get an excuse, I, I, I do what I have to do to get around it, through it, over it, whatever. No excuse, no excuse will ever, ever. No excuse is bigger than God. No obstacle is bigger than God. Now you have no excuse. I'm going to stop. We're going to pray. We're going to see God move. And, and I want to help you with your plan. I'm just going to say this. If you got some kind of plan, prayer strategy, give it to me this week. Email me, text me, whatever. I want to pray for it. You're about to move forward. You're about to move forward. You're about to move forward. Building blocks. I'm telling you, everything you do is a building block for the next season. Building block, building block, building block. One thing after another. You're building and you never stop. Did y'all get that today? I hope so. I got it. I'm getting it. Lord God, I thank you right now. And I declare every roadblock to the building block will be broken today.